Hello and welcome to another Kilt Beard Co's Beards and Gear. Hope you're having a wonderful week and that you're going to have an amazing long weekend. Good Memorial Day weekend. So, no whiskey today, no bourbon today, just a plain old beer. It's nice and warm today, been working outside, and sometimes you just need a nice crisp beer. So we got a blue moon here. Cheers. So today we're going to be talking about beards and gear. So beards, we're going to talk about uh, going into the pool for the first time uh, this year and going into the ocean. And also we're going to go and talk about uh, creating notches for certain applications out in the bush, out in the woods, hiking and camping. And, uh, and making a stake too, all from buck wood carving pocket knife. So all that and more, stay tuned. So beards. So beards, we're going to be going into um, this season where the pools are open, everybody's uh, uh, jumping head first into the ocean ex and exploring or refamiliarizing ourselves with this refreshing feeling that we get when we go from hot into cold. So, some tips. Beards. So if you go into the ocean or into chlorine water, the chlorine and the salt is going to strip away the sebum and other those beneficial oils from your beard and make it really dry and kind of rough going dry. So what we do before we get in there, have a pre-game plan. Just get really wet with water, regular water, and jump on in and it'll be good. Or you can put a nice, uh, a quick absorbing beard oil like Kill Beard Co's Beard Elixir Beard Oil. Um, just make sure it, it absorbs really quickly. It's not one of those thick beard oils that's going to hang around. We just need something that's going to create a barrier between the beard, the skin, and the um, chlorine or salts in the water. Then when we're all done, then we want to wash it all out with a good beard wash. Uh, I highly recommend making sure that you have a beard wash that has a pH between 5 and 7. Wash it all out, then put in a good conditioning beard butter. May I suggest Kill Beard Co's Best Damn Beard Butter? I shall. Kill Beard Co's Best Damn Beard Butter has no fillers, no water, no synthetics, no chemicals, no nothing. Just put that stuff in there and let the magic happen. Get all those fats back in there, the sebum's going to increase, and your beard's going to be amazing for the rest of the day. So put a good a beard butter into your beard, and you'll be good for the rest of the day after your nice, uh, refreshing activity. So that's what I got for beards today. So let's jump on in into the um, gear part of it, where we're going to use a, a buck wood carving pocket knife to create notches, different type of notches, create a stake, and you know, maybe a story or two in there. So once again, have a good Memorial Day weekend. Be safe out there. Cheers. So how's it all going today? Uh, so today we're gonna go over notches uh, for, for stakes and traps and snares and uh, hanging a pot, what name you. Uh, specifically, we're gonna go over the steak notch, the V notch, uh, the cabin notch, and the ball notch. And keep in mind, these are in stakes, so we're going to um, work on the stake end and the stake point. And today, I have this branch here that I got. It's closer to a pine in a texture. Not every tree branch is going to be completely straight, but I want about half an inch. So about half an inch to an inch for my stake for stability reasons. And the thicker, obviously, the more weight it'll be able to hold and withstand. And I want this to go at least six inches into the ground. So I would want to have this to be about a foot. So about this much right here. So we'll cut that up and we'll start carving out. And today I will be using my handy buck carving tool. Huge fan of buck and their knives. I mean, how can you go wrong with a lifetime warranty from a, a, from a company? But uh, yeah, three knives in here. I'm trying not to cut myself on air here. Got no nails. Trim those down. So yeah, I'm gonna start carving this out and tell a few stories and go over these notches. So let's get to it. And we got our stick here. I'm gonna cut this end off here and we'll start carving away here. So give me a second. So normally I have my fold out saw knife, or not saw knife, saw knife. My fold, so usually I have my fold out saw and I couldn't find that today. So I had to kind of MacGyver this into and with my drywall saw. So I'm not gonna show this on camera because it's kind of embarrassing, but it's gonna do what I need it to do. And when I find the fold out saw, I will definitely show you what one I use on a regular basis and what works for me. I want that to be gone. So we'll get rid of our bark here real quick. Is it a big deal? Not really. 
always cut away from yourself. Don't cut towards yourself. Always away from yourself. All right. So we're down to like this right now. This took me about three minutes to get there. Now I'm going to work first on the stakes end. I know it's kind of beat up here because I don't have the best um, saw cut right there, but we will take care of that really quickly. So we want this to be flat and a flat on top and kind of um, thin on the sides. like that. So if I wanted to hammer it down, it's gonna have a nice striking point there. Not pointy, not too flat, kind of like a rounded flat. Um, it's important that we get a live tree branch, not a dead tree branch, because the integrity of the branch is still there. And we wanna make sure that uh, when we strike it or we um, cut notches in it, that it's gonna be a strong hold um, grip, depending on what we're doing with it. So keep it, excuse that, keep that in mind. So first we're gonna do the um, stake notch. So stake notch is one of those notches that it's just for staking. Like you're gonna use it for uh, tents, tie downs, tarps, uh, uh, your wooby, your whatnot like that. You're tying things down, you're staking it down and you wanna make sure that, like I, use, I like to use 550 cord. Your 550 cord is well wrapped around and posted into the ground so that it can do its job with the strength that it has. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. So I'm gonna do, this, so I'm gonna do the, the, the different types on one branch, but um, you would do these t uh, typically on their separate stakes. Just for time purposes, I'm just gonna do all the notches on one. So what I like to do is from, like I'm, from the top, I wanna go about two inches down from the top. So when I hammer, it gives me some leeway if this starts to buckle down or smush down when I'm hammering, it's not going to go into the notch. So I'm going to start about right here. Let me see if I got that right. About right there. So let's do that. So you want to cut down. So it's going to be a cut down and curved in and up. So it's like this. Kind of like a shark fin almost. So I'm going to sh shave down just very little bit. Remember, all your senses are gonna tell you to go ahead and start cutting into yourself. Do not listen to that voice. You wanna cut down and away.
Now I want to make sure that this goes straight down and then it curves up, down and curves up. I'm going to try to stake it in the ground do it like, like this here. So I'm still cutting away from myself. So I don't want to go no more than half of the wood for my notch. So a little something like that, that's what I'm looking for. I probably would want this to be a little bit more of a sharper inlay, so I might come deeper in. This is basically what we want. I'll do that real quick here. Something like this. Next, we're gonna do our V notch. It's gonna be a V, so we're gonna cut down, like so, cut down. We want a V notch here. It's looking like that right now. I wanna bring it down to a V though, so I gotta really be mindful of my point here, the middle point of the V, so I can accomplish this. So this is a pretty soft wood right here. Um, so it's good for carving. Will it be the best for maybe a steak? Probably not. A steak for like a tent? No, but it will be good for everything else here. So we're getting closer to the V here, almost there. I'm gonna almost stop here. The first one I give myself a seven out of 10. This one I'm giving myself closer to an eight out of 10 when I'm done with it here. So uh, grading myself and being particular to myself. Um, the V notch here for me it, it is a little bit better than my steak notch. So I guess my kid's walking down here with a mom. Robbie, Robbie. Shoot. Robbie. Kid fell down, so. You do have to look out, oh, watch out out here. There are snakes, rattlesnakes out here. So that's one thing we do have to look out, out here. So here's my V. Not as much of a V here. Let's get the V going more on this side too. There you go, it's like a V. We have our stake notch and our V notch. So let's continue on. So next we're gonna do our log cabin on a notch here. And it's kind of like, um, what was it called? You know those old school log cabin uh, sets that you get when you were a kid, uh, uh, maybe more of my generation. Uh, it's kind of like that. It, it's, it's square and square, so you're kind of putting uh, notches together to create, you know, a log cabin, if you will. So we're going to go straight down, and it's going to be like a rectangle. That's what we're going to work for here. So let me get this started here. I'll show you what I'm looking like here in a moment. But... Um, Happy, uh, but uh, good uh, Memorial Day to everybody out there. Uh, I know this is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, I'm a veteran, and just want to wish those who are still serving out there, you know, a safe and successful mission, career, station, 
uh, what have you, because uh, it's a grind. It, and if many of you don't know, um, I am a veteran of the U.S. Army, um, 1st ID, 118th Infantry, and we were stationed out in Germany um, in attachment to the 1st ID, or part of the 1st ID, how you want to say it. Uh, and we did one tour in Iraq. Uh, we were OIF-2, is what they called it. We were the invading forces relief, uh, which is what we would like to say. That's when the real war began, because uh, that was a dynamic war in the sense that we went in there. It was like the Wild West. There was really no uh, rules of engagement, ROEs. And by the time we left there, they had a book. So... Um, I wouldn't say we wrote the book. That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, is that we were there before the handcuffs came on, before soldiers could start to, um, before they made it. So uh, soldiers really kind of had their hands tied before, um, th they had their hands tied that they couldn't do as much as we did or we could. Now, mind you, when we went there, we had, uh, we had, I'll wait for these bikes to go by. All right, we did it. That's so, that's so, fun. so when we were there, we still had softbacks on our Humvees. Um, I mean, these are from Gulf War One, maybe even Vietnam. These uh, Humvees were not fitted for the environment and the type of war that we were getting ourselves into. And it was quite evident, like every time we went out there, um, the, we, we weren't prepared for that type of war. So good thing about that war is that it prepared us for future wars, um, of that magnitude of those styles of warfare that many other countries did not participate in for, with, or against us, which is going to put us a lot further ahead in the future when it comes to warfare. So nobody likes war. War is not good, but if and when you have to fight it, the more evolved force you have, the better of a response and better off you're going to be in general uh, when you fight future wars. So that's what we had going for us. And spent a year out there in the desert. We were stationed in Tikrit. And we did, uh, went through Ramadi and everything like that too. We, our last uh, month was up in Mosul for the first elections, whatever that means. And so we're using different blades here, excuse me, to get these notches going. Um, from, from finer cuts to thicker shavings is what we're going for here. And don't have time to go between each knife uh, while I'm using it, but the outcome is what you can see what I'm trying to get to. So this is um, this spear slash not as pointed end here. It's kind of duller, so you can notch in if you need to. You're not going to break the tip. Did I mention buck knives are lifetime too? Anyways, back to the story at hand. Um, when we were over there, uh, we, we did the first elections, we were attached to, I think it was 82nd Airborne, or 101st, 82nd Airborne. And, and um, we were there staying on top of a manger manger you know how you hear about a manger like maybe in catholic school or something like that i can honestly say i've seen i've lived in and i've stayed in a manger before so yeah so that's so that was a pretty extreme um circumstance it was fucking cold out um oh by the way there's no heat so we went up there they um uh, basically we're disinfecting it with bleach because um, previously there was sheep shit everywhere. And yeah, we uh, popped our, our um, cots up. That's where we were for at least a month. And helping them get their elections. Now, was it worth it? Eh. Let's just say it came a little bit harder when it came to staying in uh, very uh, uh, difficult places. But did it make a dent into the um, actual 
purpose of us being there? Probably not. Oh, by the way, you know, I always have been told, hey, here, um, you would hear like war stories of like Beirut. Mosul was devastated like Beirut. There were so many gun bullet holes, blown up buildings, just ridiculousness. And yeah, um, it was a pretty war-torn area. So we had our manger that was on top of a hill. So we had a good um, um, view of the surrounding area, but below us was a graveyard. In that graveyard, they buried their dead. Well, in the Iraq war and preceding, there were a lot of people being buried, and these people are not buried six feet deep. They're buried just enough for the dirt to be on them to cover them. So when we come down it in our Bradleys, it stunk so bad, so bad. <clears throat> we would basically say, we're coming down a dead man's land or something like that. Uh, it's dead man's something. And uh, we all held our breath for probably about 30 seconds to a minute. If you didn't, you were to smell death, smell of death. Um, and that was every day, sometimes four times a day that you'd be going down that. So I'm gonna stop right about here. I'm close. But yeah, smell of death. And it stunk really bad. So, yes, we did lose some people when we were out there. And when it comes to Memorial Day, I look at it in a totally different way, if not of a somber time, but a celebration time of them uh, creating uh, the worst sacrifice. So that's what we got so far. Make sure I'm showing it right. So this is our new one right here. This would be our cabin block one, or cabin notch. So it should be a little bit more straight down and a little bit more squared out on the bottom there. So when you get another one, it's gonna land right like this. And you would do this, depending on how many blocks or how many logs you have or pieces of wood, multiple times so that you can stack them and they won't move. They basically create their own locking mechanisms. So that is our cabin lock, or our cabin notch, excuse me. That's our cabin notch. So I'm gonna try to make a bail notch now. So this is one of the more di uh, difficult ones, the one that I'm probably not really good at in practice, but for this one specifically, it's gonna be kind of like, you want to go in a X motion and dig it down. So basically it's going to come down and hook. Um, so this one's more for bales and uh, pots. Uh, like so bales and pots and other things like that. So um, a second ago there, uh, my uh, can of, or my bottle of carbonated drink exploded on me. So if I look a little pink and wet and everything, yeah, that just happened. But I digress. Here we go. So we're going to go X here. So we're going to go a little bit further up here. Remember, away. I'm going to get my sharper tool here. Sharper knife, finer knife. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to stick right there. Excuse me. And I tried to go towards me. So, the yeah, right there. So I'm starting to start this side out here. That's where my X goes. Just a quick here. So I'm carving up into this notch here. I'm trying to make. Remember, trying to cut it down and or away from the body. Just a little, a little more fine work I did here. It looks like this so far, looking down. It's gonna be a hook in there, it's a hook in there. So that's what we're gonna do, and I'll come back here with the finishing product. Okay, so we got our bail notch right here. This is just a little bit off. I want this X or lip to be about right here. So I'm about a quarter of an inch off of where I would want to be, but you can get the idea. It goes in here, your bail goes in here, and this will overlip it. 
and you have a nice little catch right there. So it'd catch it like that, hang like that. But you want more of a lip right here. So a little bit off here, but um, I would just I'd do it all over again. But for time constraints and everything, this is what we got. So at the very end, uh, we want to make sure we have a stake bottom. So let's work on our stake bottom. So for that, I'm going to use our bigger piece here. So I'm going to start shaving this all off. All right, so we have our stake bottom, about six inches. Maybe be a little bit more pointier, but it looks pretty good. We have our bail notch right here. I'd want this to come over about right here where my finger is, so, it, so, so anything could hang in there. So I was close, but I probably would want to redo this one over again. And then we have um, our cabin notch. Just need to square this off just a tad bit more. This would be great. And you just do it on another piece of wood and you just would line right in there like that. Next we have our V-notch. So, so our V-notch is going to be good for like toggles and um, trap. So this is what that's going to be for. And then you have our, um, what was it called? Stake notch. Just staking the ground, trying to get things plugged in, uh, held down. Uh, this probably would want to come down just a tad bit more at a, like a curved out angle. But other than that, I'd give myself probably like a 7 out of 10 on this right here for, for all these notches for the top and for the bottom. I'd give myself about a 7 out of 10. Could have done much better, but trying to do, do this in a time constraint, uh, time frame, and this is what we got to work with. So, five notches, the um, stake end, and the stake point. Um, we are good to go for mu multiple purposes and many applications out in the bush. And if you're gonna have long stays in back, you can get really creative and start doing your own, like you can build a log cabin. You can, um, for cooking at nighttime, you can have a pail hanging over so you can cook, things like that. Staking in the ground, your um, tent, your teepee, excuse me, your tent, um, your poncho, your tarp, your what have you, that will be a good one right there for you too. So. Any questions, comments, I'd love to hear it. Um, as you see, I, I give myself a seven out of 10 here, so I'm not giving myself a 10 out of 10, but uh, what do you think? Um, what notches um, strike your interest? Um, did I miss something that you do with these type of notches out in the bush or camping or hiking? I'd love to hear it, put it down in the comments. Um, if you could, I would appreciate if you subscribe to this channel. We continue to try to do some, um, um, give you some gear, equipment, tools, not just tools that like, an, a, little, like a wood carving knife, also tools like a stake and different notches so you can do different things out in the woods and hiking hunting trapping cooking building and um keeping things in place or stationary so we try to do a little bit more than just the basics